There is something very exciting in this box and I cannot wait to open it up. But before I do, let me give you a quick backstory on how this box came to be. If you're watching this video, you're probably aware of my past two years and the development of the Bee Barns. If you don't know what a Bee Barn is, you can watch any of these videos all over YouTube. If you have been following along, you may not be aware that there's a key component of the Bee Barns that came before the Bee Barns that led to the entire concept of the Bee Barn. And that is the Bee Barn frame. This right here is the key to the whole shebang. I developed this thing out of frustration because I used to hate going up to the bee yard, bending over, picking up boxes, going through hundreds of frames, destroying my back. So I made these things to make my life easier. I put them in the hives and immediately my life improved dramatically. And over the past couple years, I've come to see that these things have improved the lives of my bees as well. So let me take you back to the old days and how I used to keep my bees. And you may actually still keep your bees this way, but I gotta ask you, do you actually enjoy this process? Like say you have a double deep or a deep medium combination like I used to, and you had to isolate the queen for some reason. This is what you go through. Top box, eight frames. Oh well, she wasn't in the top box. Hmm, she wasn't in the bottom box either. Maybe I missed her in the top box. You get the idea. There's gotta be a better way. And there is a better way. I figured this out. Back when I used to keep bees in hives like this with frames like this, and I would have to do inspections and go through hundreds of frames every inspection, I used to think it would be awesome if I could lift the top frame out of the top box, and then the bottom frame would somehow be attached to it and it would come up out of the box with it. So then I would only have to inspect eight frames per hive instead of 16 frames, plus lifting this box multiple times. So I went into the barn and I started messing around. So the obvious first attempt was to cut the ears off of this frame so that this could move up and down in the box and then take glue and screws and just screw these things together and make one big frame. But that proved to be pretty weak because when you have eight or 10 pounds of honey on these things, that's gonna bend all over the place and I did not like that at all. The other thing I always noticed in my hives when I had double brood boxes was the queens always laid the top box really well. There was always tons of eggs up here on these frames, but the bottom frames always had kind of a spotty pattern, if any eggs at all. And I think that's because this is a gap and these wooden bars are big barriers for the queen to jump over and go down here and lay eggs. So I wanted to try and remove those two and see what would happen if the queens had all this space, continuous comb to lay eggs. And that's when I had to develop sidebars to make big one piece frames. So this is your standard Langstroth deep sidebar. You can buy these at any beekeeping supply place. This is a medium sidebar. And this is the Bee Barn sidebar. Now, I had to go on YouTube and do a whole bunch of searching to find out how to make these things, but I did figure it out and I learned how to do it with the table saw. Now, this doesn't probably look like much, but to make this shape on a table saw, requires eight passes through the saw, plus one more pass for the groove going down the middle. So I knew I wanted to make 100 frames, which means I had to make 200 sidebars. And to do that required this piece of wood going through this saw about 1800 times. And each time it goes through the saw, it gets a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter and a lot more dangerous. And after I had 200 sidebars, then I had to assemble the frames. Now, once I got in the groove, I learned how to assemble the frames, glue everything up, put in the foundation, and I could do about four frames per hour. So that means I spent over 25 hours assembling frames after making all these cuts on the saw. And basically the point I'm trying to make is, this was a sucky process and it was super dangerous. However, it was worth it. Using these frames has been a total dream. For the last two years, 
I have literally not lifted a brood box. All I have to do is lift the frames out of the box and I get to see the whole picture all the way down to the bottom. And you should see how the bees are using these frames. So not only are these frames great for me, but they've completely changed how the queens lay eggs in my hives. When you open up a double brood box with multiple frames in it, I'm sure you've seen this before, these half circle shaped brood patterns on the frames. Everyone sees that and go, oh, look at that brood pattern. There are no half circle brood patterns on these frames. The reason for the half circle is because the queen would love to lay in a circle, but she keeps coming across this barrier. So they lay like this back and forth on a frame. On these frames, they start in the middle and they just start going in circles and they fill up this entire thing with brood. I have eggs on my frames in my hives from the top all the way to the bottom cell. I never saw eggs down here on, on these kind of frames. So the queens are more efficient. They don't have to jump gaps. They don't have to move frames. They can spend the whole day just filling up a frame with brood. I've never seen as much brood as I have with these frames in my hives. So this thing really solved two problems. It's great for me and great for the bees, but they are a huge pain in the ass to make. I just thought to myself, there has to be a better way. And I started brainstorming and then I had an idea and that leads me back to the box. So about three months ago, I had this idea and it's a big idea and I have no idea how to make it happen because I've never done anything like this before. So I did a bunch of Googling, did some research and wound up calling a whole bunch of companies all over the country asking a ton of questions. One of them said, oh, you gotta call R&D Technologies down in Rhode Island because they can probably help you. So I called R&D Technologies and about a week later, I was in my car driving to Rhode Island with one of my bee barn frames. When I got there, I spent about two hours in a conference room talking to a whole bunch of 3D modelers about beekeeping and bee barn frames. I left and then we went back and forth over email for a couple weeks designing my bee barn frame in 3D. About three weeks after that, I got this box in the mail and now I get to open it and see what's inside. So drum roll, I'm like jittery. <laughs> nice touch R&D, thank you. People, there it is. The very first 3D printed bee barn frame. <laughs> this is amazing. This is great. It's just like, I mean, it's just like the 3D model. It's just a printed model. It's, it's, it's just great. It's exactly what I was hoping for. Holy crap. This is, this is, well, first of all, this isn't the idea. This is the prototype for the idea. Let me explain. See, the thing is, I wanna get a lot of these made because there's a lot of people out there asking for them and asking for bee barns and wanting to know how to build bee barns. And I know there's some demand out there for frames like these. So I wanna figure out a way to make a lot of them. And 3D printing is not the way to go. To make this on a 3D printer, this is such a big thing that it had to go on their special printer. This is like a $2 million machine. It looks like a huge refrigerator. And this took like all night to print. And with the design cost plus the printing cost, this frame cost about $700. <laughs> so kind of crazy and not very cost efficient for the masses. But what I wanna do, my idea, is to get these frames injection molded and mass produced. And to do that, you have to make mold. And once you make a mold, then you send the mold to an injection company and then they injection mold plastic frames and they can do tons and tons of them for very cheap and they can do it a lot more efficiently. So the final goal is injection molding frames, but I had to make a 3D model first so I can make the mold to make the frames. Now, I don't know if you know anything about injection molds, but they're kind of expensive, like a lot of money. And I don't know exactly how much money, but I'm doing research now to try and find out exactly how much I'm gonna have to spend on an injection mold. And once I find that out, 
here's what I'm thinking. I'm envisioning some kind of pre-order, crowdfunding, Kickstarter kind of deal where I gauge interest from you to see who wants these frames. And if I get the number that I need to raise to make the mold, and then I get enough pre-orders for frames that would cover the cost of the mold, then it's worth doing and I can go get the mold, produce the frames, and then ship them out and then you guys will have frames. And then I'll have a mold, so when you want more frames, we can just make more batches of frames. And that's sort of the vision, the goal. So I want to know who out there is interested in getting some of these frames. Also, if you're in the injection molding business, please contact me at this email address. And if you're a mold maker and you know how to make a mold for injection molding, please contact me at this email address. So that's what I'm trying to do here is just see who's interested and trying to figure out how much it's going to cost and how much money we can raise. But I think this is the future of beekeeping. It's definitely the future of my kind of beekeeping. And I think a lot of people out there are with me on this. So please comment below anything you want to say about this down there. I'd love to hear your thoughts and stay tuned because this is just the beginning. Thanks for watching.